All right, so today we're going to talk about how much disk space for Ubuntu. The shocking truth. It's not that shocking, really. Um, you, you could probably have guessed, but um, there are some things you, you might not know about this. So how much disk space do you really need for an Ubuntu installation? Well, um, it totally depends. Are you installing the server edition? Which, uh, which version of Ubuntu? Um, what was it, um, 1804 or 2004? You know, was it was it an older version, a newer version, desktop edition, server edition? It, it depends. So yeah, short answer, it depends. Um, but we we got it down to 2.4 gigs. Now you, you'll see up here in this this top paragraph it says 25 gigs recommended. So um, they they recommend 25 gigs. That's generally what everyone says. And you, you should probably have at least that much or more. I mean, maybe if you're the only reason you would be you know, allocating less than that. You're not going to get a disk that small these days, unless it's maybe a USB drive, and and then I could see. But um, but you might be concerned if you're installing VMs and you can carve it down within a few gigs. And maybe you just want something super tiny, and it, it doesn't matter. You don't need tons of data. Then yeah, you you could strip it down to like two point four gigs. So um, yeah. Let, let me read through this. If you've ever had to plan out the installation of an Ubuntu Linux system, you probably found yourself asking how much disk space for Ubuntu. According to their website, Ubuntu recommends 25 gigs of storage for the desktop edition. You can definitely do with less, but there's a good chance you will need more. It all depends on your use case. There are a lot of things to consider and we're going to cover, <clears throat> we're, we're going to go over yeah, along with some example, yeah, we're going to go over these along with some example scenarios, but first we're going to actually test out a fresh installation and see what the requirements really are. That, that's where I got that number, the 2.4. Now that, that's the server edition, but we'll, let, let's get to that. And um, bear, bear with me, I'm, I'm a little on the tired side because it's kind of late, so um, yeah, bear, bear with me if I can barely read my own text. But uh, let, let's let's uh, yeah move, moving along here. Let, let's see what we got. All right, testing. We, we've tested this. Um, how much disk space for Ubuntu? So um, we used two freshly installed test systems in VirtualBox. We didn't install any optional software. So your mileage may vary depending on depending on what choices you make. Now that means, for example, if you install the server version and you choose to install Kubernetes or, or whatever other additional server-related packages, it might use up more, more disk space, obviously. And disk, um, you know, desktop or server, you both can just pull things down from the repo, so the more you add, the, the more disk space. But yeah, anyways, we, we tested this with Ubuntu. I mean, right now, Ubuntu 20.04 is already out, but at the time of, uh, doing this testing, we, we'd used Ubuntu 19.10. Now it's not that much different any, these days, but um, so th this isn't that old, but um, in any case, um, yeah, no extras selected, and the Ubuntu 19.10 server came out to, as you can see here, 6.3 gigs. That's, that's what it came out to by default, and 2.4 gigs after removing the swap file. So um, the, the desktop edition, um, same, same version, 19.10 desktop, we did a normal install and it came out to 7.8 gigs, so a little bit larger. And um, after the initial install, and so we got that down to 6.2 gigs after removing the swap file. So um, yep, we, we recovered less space removing the swap file on the desktop system. They both had a swap file, so it looks like um, overall the desktop system is, I guess you could call it more bloated or has more packages by default, which makes a whole lot of sense. It has X windows. Um, I don't believe the server does. I mean, it definitely doesn't boot into X windows. I'm not sure if it's installed and just disabled. That wouldn't make sense. That would be crazy. I, I can't imagine they would do that. But yeah, uh, for, for obvious reasons, the desktop has a ton more. I actually have not checked if they've installed it. I, I assume they haven't. That, that would be crazy. Um, any case, I, I shouldn't even have to mention that. But um, yeah, so you, you could cut these down even more, a whole lot more if you just remove packages. You, you could dig into it, but we didn't go very far. We just poked around a little bit to see what was using a ton of space. Um, and if you happen to not 
need the swap file or you just like maybe you have a ton of RAM and you don't believe you'll ever need it or you just like living life on the edge that's fine you can delete your swap file if you really need to but um, really you don't need to conserve disk space that that much so anyways take these take so uh, take the values above as the absolute minimum for the OS and add whatever space you think you might need for files so if re you remove the swap file you can actually get lower um, blah 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 all the stuff I already went over um, all right so it is important to note that a given installation might use a different amount of disk space based on what options you choose. The desktop installer lets you select either a normal install or a minimal install. With a minimal install, you might have some more space. Um, the, the Ubuntu server installation has a large number of optional server components that can be selected, such as Kubernetes. These could end up using quite a bit more disk space. Keep in mind that there's a good chance that you will want to add more software after installation also, this is in addition to whatever data you might want to store. Yeah, so when you look at these numbers, yeah, don't say this, I mean, th these two numbers in red, assuming you're not gonna remove your swap file, these two red numbers are the minimum for the OS. Uh, so assuming you're not gonna try to trim it down or something, you'll need at least this much just for the OS, and you're probably gonna wanna install more packages over time. And even if you don't install more packages, I mean, you also have to take into account your data. So like, if you're running a server, what are you serving up? Is it web pages? Well, how much web content are you gonna have? What if it's not just HTML files? What if it's a ton of image files? It can add up, you know, you don't wanna run out of space. Really totally depends on your use case. Maybe it's just you're creating a DHCP server and it's never gonna serve data or grow at all. In which case, you can say if it's a VM, yeah, maybe you wanna trim it down to as lean and mean as possible that might make sense to go really small. So there are use cases for trimming it down as small as possible. Um, for the desktop, yeah, you're probably a fewer cases for uh, trimming it down a lot, but you can. Anyway, moving along here. All right, here's a screenshot from a freshly installed Ubuntu 1910 desktop VM. So yeah, I put my screenshot over here um, and you'll notice it says, sudo yeah i did sudo fdisk dash l at dev sda and that is our hard disk and um it shows one partition um so is the size is 75 gigs because i allocated that much and um so the 75 gig partition 7.8 was used so there you go um now, here's another screenshot showing the disk tool. There is my partition, which, um, yep, th there we go. So that, that's my partition in the, the disks tool. Um, yeah, this, that's what they call it. They, they wanted to be super descriptive and, and give it a nice brand name. They just called it disks. It's, 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 there's another name too. I forget if it's, if it's gnome disks or whatever the name for the tool was, but they just want to call it disks just, just for because that, that's how they are. That's how they want to brand things these, day, these days. It, it kind of drives me nuts, but what, what are you going to do? Um, anyway, same, same way they call like Thunder Video Player or, or, or Totem. They're, they're using Totem now, and, and, and um, they, they call it Video Player. They just call it Video Player or Video or something like that. It just drives me nuts the way they name things. Not, not as bad as, as what the, how they name the Xbox, but um, yeah, the Microsoft... Uh, is way worse at naming things than, than Ubuntu is. But um, anyways, yeah, and Ubuntu is just renaming other people's packages that they included into their, their product, which is fine, whatever. Um, yeah, but anyways, moving along, that was me getting off on a tangent there. So um, here's a screenshot from a freshly installed Ubuntu 1910 server VM. So no GUI here. Um, this is basically just on the console, didn't SSH in or anything. Um, didn't even forward the ports, but um, we, if we see, I do another fdisk-l on SDA, um, and we're gonna see that's our partition, 75 gigs. We see 6.3 is used of the 74 gigs. So there you go. And um, moving along here, nothing special there. Yeah, so a note on swap space. Our Ubuntu 1910 desktop install created a two gig swap file. 
while the Ubuntu 19.10 server created a 3.9 gig swap file. No swap partitions were created. <coughs> now, I remember way back when I had to install Red Hat Linux and I had to choose like, I had to do manual disk partitioning and, um, and I, I remember creating like uh, a swap partition and that's how things were done way back then. We, we, we were installing swap partitions. This is before the Debian existed at the time, but, um, and I was not a Debian user at the time. I was a Red Hat user. This is back in like 2002 or 2001 or something like that. But um, yeah, I, I was um, a Red Hat user and then became a Slackware user. Um, never used Debian at the time. Um, but, uh, and Ubuntu didn't exist. I forget what year Ubuntu came into existence. But um, not too long after that, I guess. But um, any case, and I, I would bet if you went back to the original Ubuntu, I have not verified this, they probably used a, a swap partition. So probably just all, I'm, I'm assuming all, that's the old way for all distros, not just like an Ubuntu versus Red Hat thing. But yeah, I remember creating swap partitions. Now we have swap files, way more convenient to work with. Um, <clears throat> there's probably, probably a lot more to be said about them. But anyways, up on the, the top here, you see, here's what it looks like on the server. So yeah, that's me doing ls-lh on the swap image. The h is to make it human readable. You can see it's 3.9. So basically what I already said when I read through that paragraph. Now, down below, you see a screenshot from, this is a terminal, but it's it's, it's from the GUI. I'm using GNOME terminal. And... Um, yeah, here's what it looks like on the desktop, showing how much free memory there is. Um, yeah, no, no swap is being used, and um, you can see it's a two gig swap file. They name it differently. Why, I don't know, but they do. All right, so if in, when you look above, um, yeah, that one's not using any swap space either. So that's that, uh, move along here. All right, now you can actually disable and remove swap space if you like. We were able to cut the server disk usage down to 2.4 and the desktop down to 6.2 which we already talked about. Anyway, um, <clears throat> here are the commands I used to actually do that. On the, the first, first we have the commands we tested on the server. You just do a swap op. Of course, we're running sudo before all of these unless you just want to run as root, which um, as far as I'm concerned is totally fine. You probably wouldn't want to do that in a corporate work environment. Um, just, you know, not how people do things and it's kind of frowned upon. But um, whatever your preference is, if you're running this at home, sudo or just su whatever however you like doing things um in this case i used sudo because it's the more correct way of doing things just prefix everything with sudo so um yeah not not to get off on another tangent here but um yeah we do sudo swap off so you run swap off dash a dash v disables all swap and then you do a rm sudo you just basically we're just rming this the swap file the the swap dot img and um, then remove the swap entry from the FS tab. So I'm not showing the actual contents of the FS tab, it's pretty simple. I'm saying to use VI here, but if you're not familiar with VI, just use nano. I should probably put that in my instructions going forward so beginners and advanced users can do it because if you're, if you're far along enough that you understand VI, then you probably understand that you could use VI instead of nano. But if you're a beginner and you don't know how to use VI, it, it's it's good that someone tells you that you have the option to use use Nano. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've known people. I, I know people who um, who completely just uh, avoided using Linux for years because um, be, be, because they hated VI. A lot of people hate VI. It just doesn't make sense to so many people, and and you could understand why. It, I I like VI. It has a lot of um, nice features and stuff. Um, and I use it in a lot of cases. Sometimes I edit my web pages and um, write scripts in VI. I, I write big things, um, nothing too, too huge. But other times I just use uh, an advanced graphical text editor. Sometimes I use an IDE. Depends what I'm doing and how I feel that day. So um, anyways, yeah, you edit the FS tab. There's gonna be one entry for swap. It's gonna be super obvious what it is. You can comment it out by putting a pound sign at the beginning, or you could just delete it. Um, <clears throat> that way it won't re-enable the swap image on boot. And, uh, well, if you removed it, um, honestly, I'm not sure if it's going to, um, I'm not sure how it would handle that if you just removed the, the file and then rebooted. 
But um, yeah, we, one way or another, just keep it clean, take it out of the FS tab. Now, basically the exact same thing on the server, except the same the exact same commands, except instead of removing swap.img, we're removing just a file called swap file. And then we edit the, the FS tab the same way. It'll be super obvious. The pro should be the only line that says the word swap in it. Um, anyways, moving along here. All right, how much disk, how much space should I allocate for Ubuntu? Well, um, there are several different things to take into account. The operating system, the software and applications, application data, that could include a database, web pages, etc. So like, like if you're running a server, you're gonna be, you know, maybe, maybe it's a database that, that doesn't just run with some, you know, a, like it's going to be different if it's a production database versus a, a test database or whatever. If you're actually loading lots of data in there, it could grow quite a bit. So you kind of want to know what you're going to need um, and plan that out ahead of time. And then there's logs. Just pretty much any system is going to have logs and they can grow. They can fill a system up, especially if they're application logs. But the system logs will grow too. Um, so you're going to need like log trimming and log rotation and all that. But um, do be aware that they can fill the system up and you need some space to keep them. So um, the operating system we talked about above and how much it needs, we, sh we showed exactly what it needs. The software and applications depends on your use case and what you want to install. Um, same, same, similar thing for the desktop, um, how much data you're going to save. You're going you to save videos on your desktop, you're going to save images, what, what are you going to keep? Documents. It, it completely depends. and. Um, with the server, you're going to have a little bit more insight as to what it's going to be used for ahead of time. Still, things can change. With a desktop, you could use it for all sorts of things. You might say, oh, I'm only going to be using this Ubuntu desktop for a few things. And then you start using it, and you're like, oh, this is such a great system. I'm going to start doing more. And then you realize, oh, I didn't allocate enough disk space. I, I, I feel, and yeah, point is, there, there are going to be more unexpected use cases with a, a desktop system than a server system, usually, not always. All right, so <clears throat> you might actually want to use separate disks for data and for your operating system. This way, it's much easier to expand your system later. Another advantage is, is that if you ever need to rebuild your machine or reinstall the OS, it doesn't pose as much of a risk to your data. You can even disconnect your data disks while reinstalling the OS. This, it's uh, very common to use a separate disk or partition for VAR, since this is where your logs are written. Um, the advantage is that if the logs that accidentally fill up your file system, it won't affect your root disk. Um, yeah, so a lot of things to consider. And uh, putting your OS se separately from your data is really convenient. Um, not just um, on, another, uh, on another partition, but put it on a separate disk, and you can unplug your data disk when you do a system, re when you're reinstalling your OS, you don't have to worry about accidentally, you know, pointing to the wrong disk and wiping all your data out. You should still back things up anyways, but still, always good to give yourself fewer headaches. Now, server example. Uh, as an example, you might have something like this. Note that the uh, slash data is on a separate drive and the others are all on the same drive. So this is an example of how you might lay out your drives and partitions. So um, <clears throat> notice in this table below, we have two disks. See the, the first disk has four partitions all in green. We have SDA1, SDA2, SDA3, SDA4. And then we have SDB1. So the SD is for, I think, SATA disk is what it stands for, if I'm correct, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know. But the A, stand, the, the third letter in there, stands for the actual disk. Um, so A for the first disk, B for the second disk. Um, and the, the, the uh, number after that stands for the partition. So you might take your first disk and sp split it up between um, boot, swap, root, and var. That's a pretty normal way of doing things. Um, that, that's pretty standard, although these days, we, as we've seen, we're using swap files instead of a swap partition. Um, making var a separate partition is nice. Um, they should be rotated anyways, but a lot of people like to do that. Um, it's not a bad idea, especially with servers. Um, var holds variable data, so like logs and stuff. 
um, usually, and sometimes other data. Now, assuming we were going to create a dedicated data partition, separate or data drive could be a partition or a separate drive. In this example, it's a drive um, that would be on a completely separate disk um, that goes in data. So this is an example of how you might um, lay things out and how you might plan for disk space. This is like how much you might need. Like notice boot has almost no space at all. It's only a, like 100 megs. Um, the OS, just give it, give it 10 gigs. I mean, given do plan ahead, but this is an example. You might choose to give it 10 gigs for the OS, maybe a tiny bit of software, and then just leave a little bit of free space just in case. Um, and then, so that doesn't get filled up, you give, give um, var a larger partition, and um, then your data goes on a whole nother drive for the reasons that we discussed. So this is a great example of what you might do. Um, now, tiny laptop example. If you were running a really tiny laptop with a, a really tiny disk, you might have something a little more like this. It would give you only a little bit of extra space after installing your OS. Um, your logs would just be written to your root disk. This could be totally acceptable if you either don't have a lot of data or rely on cloud storage. Um, so yeah, that's, <clears throat> so for example, um, this one, yeah, gives you your 100 megs for boot, which is basically nothing, a gig for swap space and 16 for, or 15, sorry, for, um, so this is all one disk, not two disks like in the previous example, all one disk and the, the root partition is 15 gigs. Combine var with it because it's so small you don't even want to split them up. You want the flexibility. This is assuming you have like a 16 gig drive. So maybe it's a really old super mini netbook laptop or some ancient laptop or maybe you're booting something right off a USB drive and it has no hard drive in it. Maybe you have like a 16 gig, gig USB thumb drive. That's a, a, a use case, a totally valid use case. So yeah, that's my tiny laptop example. All right, so moving on. All right, there we go. Looks like that's the end of my video. That, this is my last slide. So um, like and subscribe. Click the bell. Um, yeah, definitely subscribe if you want more. Um, if, if you, if you want to follow my channel and see what, what other videos I come out with, click the bell for updates. Give me a thumbs up, just like the video. It helps out a lot. Um, did you love this video? Did you hate this video? Leave a comment. Um, let me know what you think. Um, praise, criticism, whatever. It doesn't matter, positive, negative. I just want to hear it all. Tell me how you feel. Let me know what you think. I, I do want to know um, what, what everybody thinks. So definitely leave a comment below. And if nothing else, just click the like button. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.